the textbook to the projects. This time we're going to concentrate on the four C's. Watch the following video uh, that is an interview to Joe Coyle, the professor of learning innovation at the University of Aberdeen, in, in which she explains what the four T's teaching framework is. While you watch, please complete uh, the four C's and what they mean in the planning frame. Now that you have uh, watched the video and read what it says in the, uh, in the, in the handout, uh, let's try to remember what we need to uh, work with in the framework for CLIL. Um, the content uh, has to do with the progression in knowledge and skills that we need to teach our students. Uh, so they can communicate, and that's our second C. This communication means the interaction of the language using to learn. That is, language is not isolated, but is integrated uh, with the content and what we need for them to use in the interaction. Cognition has to do with the thinking skills, that is, thinking and understanding, and this will give us uh, the engagement. Uh, we are going to see later on Bloom's categories that have to be considered here and that they are very important for our planning work. And culture uh, has to do with citizenship, awareness, awareness of our own culture and the culture of others, also interculturality. How can we use these four C's to plan? There are some questions that we need to ask ourselves when we plan. Understanding uh, is uh, very useful for our planning. Now, try to look at units from your textbooks, uh, the ones you use or you have used, and find uh, examples of the three C's we have already developed, content, communication, and cognition. Uh, get ready to bring them for our next class. Now, in your handout, point D, uh, you have to complete uh, a, a chart where you differentiate Objetivos de Enseñanza y Objetivos de Aprendizaje. Please complete them and then come back to this uh, video and check Results. Here are the Objetivos de Enseñanza y Objetivos de Aprendizaje already in the charts. Check if you have done it right or if not. Try to see why you have not. Now let's try to remember about Bloom's taxonomy. Um, Bloom was a psychologist and educator who developed this taxonomy uh, in order to help educators think about the thinking process. The think thinking process, especially as regards uh, studying. Now you see that uh, they go from the basic ones, like remembering, to the most complicated and complex one, like creating. Uh, on the right, you've got some verbs that are related uh, to the different steps in this Bloom taxonomy. Remember that we have always uh, tried to go up in this uh, taxonomy and try that our students reach the creating zone. For that reason, you've got on the right some uh, verbs that will help. These verbs will help you with uh, when you plan objectives, goals. the video that is suggested here where you have the explanation of Bloom taxonomy and the difference between the hot that is higher order thinking skills and the lot the lower order thinking skills and then come back
Now that you have uh, watched the video, you can see how the plot and hot are part of Bloom's taxonomy and that our aim as teachers should be to uh, teach our students and, and take them from the low order thinking skills to the higher order thinking skills. That is, instead of working always with the remembering and understanding, we have to go to the evaluating and creating. Now, in your handouts, you've got um, a great amount of different uh, verbs that you can use when you plan for your goals, for your objectives, so you can reach not just the lot, but also the hot. So take them into account when you plan. Now, let's go back to the four C's. There is a C we didn't talk about, and that's the C that represents culture. Now, culture is not just a postscript, but rather a thread which weaves its way throughout the topic. Think of it as a circle which envelops the topic. It's not enough to justify pluriculturalism by using another language without explicit reference via the other three C's to cultural opportunities which would not have existed in a mother tongue setting. For example, using the Italian language countries where there is a draft so that case studies can be used to examine the project from an alternative perspective. Interviews with children whose lives have been changed when water aid has provided them with a water well, for example. Now, we have to think that culture is more an exposure to alternative perspectives and shared understandings, which will deepen awareness of otherness and self. And it's a vehicle for exploring the links between language and cultural identity, examining behaviors, attitudes, and values. Uh, we have to think of context and content which enrich the learner's understanding of their own culture and those of others. So when we think about the 4C, that is culture, we have to think about the cultural implications of the topic, how does the clear context allow for this value added, and to think about otherness as the self. Things like that have to be uh, clear in our planning, but we also have to think how this C connects with the other Cs. Now I will give you some tasks, that is task four in your handouts. Have a look at the model for planning and analyze it. As you read the objectives, consider the ABC model in the Annex 2 in your handout. You will need to bear in mind this analysis for the design of your teaching sequence. So this will be checked next meeting. So please do it so you can uh, plan in a better way. Now. What are you expected to do? This is um, uh, an example of how to work with the four C's. Stage one is called analyze. That is, stage one centers on the definition of the content focus. We have to look for content. Once defined, the content can be analyzed for the language needed in order for conceptual learning to take place. So from content, we will go to communication. It's important to identify keywords, phrases, grammatical functions for concept formation and comprehension. Again, we link this with linguistics, that is, with the language acquired and needed, so we will link this with communication. In the second stage, we will add, and here we put the focus on the learner. What shall we do? Well, language experiences are added to the lesson plan so the learner can operate effectively in a clear setting. That is, strategy for reading and understanding a difficult text, a new vocabulary explanations, strategies, uh, learner strategies, and teaching strategies for whatever you need for the communication uh, in the classroom. Classroom talk, discussion, task realization. That is, the teacher has to think how she will scaffold and support this learning through the use of language, of course. And in stage three, it's apply and assure. And here we focus on cognition, that is thinking skills, and culture, the other two Cs. So we need to uh, deliver tasks and opportunities which enable learners to extend their cognitive skills and cultural awareness, and that is made transparent to the learners. So we need to apply a high level of questioning and cultural understanding. 
And here is where uh, we have to start working with projects, taking into account everything we have already said. And here are um, two quotes from the different curriculum designs from primary and secondary school, where they think about and talk about project work. That is what we have to do to plan our classes. So, la planificación por proyectos guiará el desarrollo de los temas, los materiales y los modos de conocer. Remember that it's task por lo que se propone secuenciar los contenidos, ya sea en dos meses o en un trimestre, para que los alumnos puedan prepararse para la tarea final, la producción final del proyecto, the outcome. Otra opción es planificar proyectos mensuales, si bien esto implica un menor tiempo para el desarrollo y para llegar al resultado final. This is taken from Curriculum Design Primary School. El trabajo en la clase de lengua extranjera constituye una serie de tareas intermedias con un fin determinado, la realización de un proyecto que va más allá de aprender vocabulario, aprender gramática o leer para completar el ejercicio de comprensión. Dichas tareas deben llevarse a cabo a partir de situaciones reales o hipoverosímiles de lectura o de escucha, así como de escritura o de expresión oral, the four skills. Cabe destacar que al indicar la planificación por proyecto, se hace referencia a una tarea final planificada con los alumnos y que sirve como disparadora de sus inquietudes para aprender determinados contenidos. That is their interest and life. This is taken from the curriculum design of secondary school. So now that we know that we have to work with projects in both levels, we need to do it. What are we going to do for next class? For next class, you are going to define the title of your project and the outcome. That is the first step of project work. Then you are going to work with its didactic units. You are going to include a sketch of the propósitos de enseñanza, objetivos de aprendizaje, and índice de avance prescribed in the curriculum design for each year and different levels. And you are going to apply the concept of context, genre, and the forces, and blue taxonomy when you apply it. So for next meeting, you are going to have an outline of what your project will be like. That is, title, topic, outcome, didactic unit, Propósitos de enseñanza, objetivos de aprendizaje, and índices de avance, and everything has to be related to the concepts of context, genre, and the four C's. I hope uh, you, you can do it, and we will check this next time. Thanks, and see you in a week.